Good afternoon and, and welcome to the Flurry's virtual open day. So before I start, I'd like to uh, acknowledge the traditional owners of the land in which today's events hosted, uh, even virtually, the, uh, the land of the Wanjiri people and pay respect to their elders and families. So my name's uh, Associate Professor David Abbott and I'm a researcher in the neuroimaging and epilepsy uh, groups at the Flory. And I'm also chair of the Flory's graduate research committees. So in, in these roles, I've had the unique pleasure of, of watching many graduate students successfully start their research career. And it's one of the best parts of my job, I think. So today, it's really an absolute pleasure to welcome you all to our um, information session. Now, of course, unfortunately, COVID-19 has prevented us opening our physical doors to you, but we can still guide you through an exciting event. You'll be hearing from the director of the Flory. You'll be hearing from uh, well class researchers and theme heads of the Flory, and you'll have a chance to meet our students and hear about life uh, as a Flory student. So to start off today's event, I'd like to introduce the director of the Flory uh, and head of the Flory department at the University of Melbourne, Professor Steve Petru. Um, Professor Petru is a globally recognized leader in the field of iron channel neuropathies with a particular focus on genetic epilepsies affecting infants and young children. And his research, much like um, much of the Flory is interdisciplinary. He's uh, national and international collaborations with leading clinicians and scientists through which he's also co-founded two biotech companies to commercially develop new treatments for patients with epilepsy and related disorders. So uh, please welcome Steve. Thanks David for the introduction and welcome to all the student participants. As David said, uh, we sort of need to acknowledge that it's been an unprecedented year this year, unfortunately, due to the COVID situation. Um, and it's unfortunate that we don't get to welcome you face to face at the Institute, but we do hope to have that opportunity sometime in the near future. Um, with that said, when I think about the year that's been behind us and, and the rest of the year that's before us and all the challenges that we've faced, I think there are some real positives that are emerging. Um, emerging for science in particular, I think it's almost, um, no one is going to argue with the idea that at, at a global scale, that people recognise the importance of science. Um, no, there's no better time uh, for us to understand that and, and for our politicians, our members of our community, and, and for you as students to understand exactly how important science is for humanity. Um, it had an incredible event that's befallen upon us, the challenges of dealing with the acute impacts of the virus are with us. But as neuroscientists, we're beginning to see challenges emerging at the, uh, at the neural scale. Um, and, and, these, and this understanding is only starting to emerge. And we think that it's important that as science leaders, we take charge and, and we, we, we work towards positively impacting society. So it is an amazing time um, to think about having a career in science. So we, we obviously, the, the sort of work that we do at the Flory, um, if you think about the impacts of COVID on people um, have been locked in on, in, in, in these prolonged um, sort of shutdowns, that has impact on, on our mental health. Um, the virus itself is starting to impact the brain in ways that we didn't initially predict. Uh, we have all know about the changes in our ability to smell or the hyposmia or anosmia as one of the symptoms, um, the, 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 the many neurological symptoms that is occurring. And then we um, work from the flory that only came out last week, really started to raise the spectre of what some of the longer term impacts might be. And, and, and our researchers are led by uh, Kevin Barnum um, to start to discuss the work on the hidden wave and, and we, we might start to see new challenges emerging for brain science as a result of this pandemic. So I think it's, um, it's an amazing time to start to think about what you can do for society in your career. Um, the next slide, please. So the Flory is the largest brain research organization in the Southern Hemisphere. And our reputation is in world-class research and translation. And I think that's what distinguishes us um, as a 
Brain Research Institute in Australia is that we're very much interested in understanding brain function, but we're also very much interested in translating that understanding um, into outcomes that benefit people and benefit our communities. Um, our researchers study a range of um, neurological and mental health disorders. Uh, we have an incredibly talented um, um, support staff at the Flory who collectively work to make us a place that really empowers our staff, empowers our students, enables us to conduct you know, innovative and exciting research and lets us do that in a way that we can work freely with the, with the partners in our precinct, whether that be with the university, the hospitals, um, commercial partners, government, um, the Flory is all about that. And I think that's such an important element of, of the recipe that we need to be a successful research organization in the modern era. Um, and as, as David said, apart from being the director of the Flory, I'm also um, a researcher and had a long-term career in research of iron channels and the genetic disorders um, that impact iron channel function and brain function, very much interested in genetic epilepsies. And I think it's been, I had a real privilege in my career to not only to understand how genetic variation impacts brain function, but also to, to try to develop new therapies based on that understanding. And we're hoping now to have a real impact on child, rare childhood epilepsies and start um, with me and, and, the, and the very, very many uh, people in my group uh, to have a real impact on, on, on these children. So, and I think each of us um, has that opportunity to, to have impact on society. And that's a, it's, it's, it's an absolute privilege to be in that position to be able to do that as a, as a research career. As you'll hear from some of our leaders later in the presentation, um, the drive to really understand the mysteries of the brain and mind, and then to be able to translate that understanding into impacts for people and communities is a really common theme amongst many of us at the Flory. Some of us focus more on just getting a very fundamental um, and basic understanding of exactly how brain and mind works. Others of us um, start to think about how we can use that understanding to develop new therapies or new diagnoses and ways of impacting um, people through that understanding. And, and each of those choices and each of those ways forward is equally as important as the others. And, and, and for each student, you may have a particular interest and, and a way that you, your own personal views are. And I think you'll find that, that you'll be accommodated by different groups and different thinking at the Flory um, that should be able to find a, a great spot for you to, to work how you think you wanna work um, for the benefit of your own career, but also for the benefit of society. So if you go to the next slide, please, Jackie, just get a snapshot of the Institute. Uh, we're quite a diverse organization. We have around 400 staff and 200 postgraduate students. We've got campuses here in Parkville and also a campus at the Austin Hospital in Heidelberg. Um, so we've, we've also got, um, we've got two buildings on site at the university, the Kenneth Meyer building and the older building on, right on the corner of uh, Grattan and Royal Parade, um, which, you'll, which you see there at the Howard Florey Labs. <clears throat> we've got numerous facilities, um, state-of-the-art imaging, um, we've got um, a bioresource um, facility. We've got amazing um, a a facilities for conducting um, animal behavioral experiments. And, and so state-of-the-art facilities, we can do multidisciplinary research. And, and as I said before, strongly clinical links. And that's a very critical part of our DNA, including Royal Melbourne Hospital. Many clinicians who have positions at the Royal Melbourne Hospital also count the Flory as their research home, similarly at the Austin Hospital. We study around uh, 18 different diseases that affect brain and mind and have over about 200 active research projects and clinical trials. And just as a, as a, a number to understand, so about 4.7 million Australians every year are affected uh, by one of the conditions that we research, which is just a remarkable number to think uh, that we have the potential to impact that many people uh, with our work. Uh, next slide, please, Jackie. So we are united 
um, at the Institute in our common goal to improve people's lives through our research. And you can see here that some of the different themes that we've got currently at the Flory around discovery science, mental health, dementia, stroke and epilepsy. Um, and these themes work very well um, collaboratively. Uh, they, they work um, in, in, in specific disease areas. And you can see we also are very interested in the life stages of um, that people go through and how our, the brain function in health and disease is a critical part of that life. Getting a healthy start to life and understanding the developing brain, intervening early, understanding the environment. And um, we've got groups that are trying to understand the environment and how plastics in the environment can have long-term impacts on our health. Um, in, our, in our adult years, uh, when, when we're productive, uh, we face a number of challenges there, uh, whether it be mental health, whether it be disorders that we develop in that period. Um, and we want to understand those and we want to try and alleviate um, any human conditions that are, that are impacted by those disorders. Then as we age, how do we do so in a productive way? How do we you know, hold off the, 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 the impacts of dementias and neurodegenerative disorders to live productively and healthily as long as we possibly can? These are things that are important to us. These are things that are important to society as a whole. Um, next slide, please. As I'm sure you know, the, the COVID has had an incredible impact on the way we all live our lives, including our workplaces. And so I just wanted to let you know that um, depending on the project that you, you might be interested in, it may be um, the case that in 2021, that, that, that you may have some restrictions in accessing uh, that activity at the Flory. Things are starting to ease now, um, but so it's important that you discuss that very carefully with, with um, supervisors, potential supervisors to understand um, how that project might be impacted. We're hoping, working very, very hard, of course, to minimize that impact um, so that we can offer as much as we possibly can uh, to our students. Students are a very, very important part of the future of the Institute. So we take that commitment very seriously and we'll do whatever we can to try and ensure the student experience is as uh, productive and as satisfying as it can be under the conditions that we uh, are in. Um, but it's, it's, it's important to know that we have been open. The Flory is doing activity and you can see our researchers um, on the bottom left there, masked up. And that's one of the conditions now that we met wear a mask whilst we're at the Institute. It's an important part of our um, protecting our colleagues from COVID infection and being able to stay productive at the same time. Um, so here you can see just a few stories. And I, I mentioned this story earlier on the left, the neurological um, consequences, uh, Lee Beauchamp and Kevin Barnum here who worked on uh, under this, uh, this paper that came out last week around how COVID infection might actually have a long-term impact on uh, brain function, especially in Parkinson's disease, where it might increase the risk. And we're, we're very um, concerned and we're actually looking at whether or not there is going to be an uptick in the number of cases um, you know, in, in the future as a result of this not only thinking to observe that, but also Kevin's work is, is, and Lee's work is, is, is positioned to try and impact that. You know, how do we intervene? If we know this is coming, what work do we need to do now to be able to intervene? You'll also see very important work led by Brad Turner um, in the middle there. Um, you, Brad is um, one of, in Australia, the world's leading researchers in motor neuron disease. Um, and his, his lab has got a very, you know, very sharp focus on trying to understand that disorder and then trying to intervene. Um, they, they're doing therapy um, discovery and, and, and they've got a, a very huge program in that ably funded by um, Australia's uh, Motor Neuron Disease Foundations. And we look forward to seeing where Brad's work will take him. And you can see there, um, the football player um, Danaher there, who's one of the great ambassadors for this disorder, he himself being um, 
a patient with MNZ. And we've also started some partnerships with the university. And as I said, the Flory is an independent organization. Um, we, we reside within the university's grounds, but we're governed and operated independently. But of course, we have very, very close links with the university. We work uh, very closely with them. Part of that is the student programs where we, we, we um, obviously can take on students of the university um, to undertake honours and masters and PhDs. And as part of that student experience, um, um, Professor Andy Lawrence has spearheaded this multi-institute uh, mental health PhD program to offer um, specific training in, 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 in the areas of mental health for our PhD students. And, and these PhD programs are a critical part of the Flory experience. Um, so clearly, if you want to understand more about our research, please visit our website. Um, you'll get it and we'll reach out to the speakers that you hear today. Go to our website. You'll see there should be um, many, many projects there for you to look at. And the best thing to do is to peruse those. Or if someone's um, a talk today piques your interest, send them directly, reach out, send them an email, find a time to connect on Zoom or on the phone and have a, have a discussion about the program. Um, before I close, if we just go to the next slide, give you a little overview of um, what, what does the Flory student experience look like? So what can you expect when you come to the Flory? Well, uh, you'll have high quality, internationally recognized supervisors who are leaders in their field. You'll have a, a highly supportive training environment with state-of-the-art facilities and equipment. Um, and this, this extends beyond your, just the project that you're doing. Um, you'll have an active and connected student group. Um, you'll, hear, you'll, hear from, you'll hear from some of those later today. Uh, there, there'll be opportunities for professional development beyond your lab, including um, a newly launched and competitive internship program, which offers these short placements for students in science communication, business development, and other career enhancing areas. Uh, and importantly, a network of peers. And it's important when you start your career in science that you're thinking of um, careers, of course, that can include uh, being uh, researchers at an institute like the Flory, that include having positions at universities as lecturers, um, but also includes many other directions, whether you move into um, industry and, and use your skills to make new drugs and to run clinical trials, whether you move into other sectors, and there are many outlets for um, people with honors and masters and PH degrees in neuroscience. So if you go to the next slide. So if you, if you choose to join us at the Flory, you can be, expect to be a part of an institute that prides itself on, on its innovation, on its visionary thinking, on its research excellence, and really, it's really important on its people. We want to unite people. We want to have an inclusive and diverse institute that respects diversity, that respects opinions, and, and that these people come together, solve some of the most complex um, mind and brain problems, and we can empower you to be the best researcher you can be. So I wish you all the very best for your future endeavors. Um, please avail yourselves of the staff at the Institute to learn more about what's available here.